am Mark and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Well, today's going to be a little bit of a news roundup. We're going to talk about Kamala Harris and Tim Walls, Joe Biden, and then we're going to switch over to the other side of the pond and see what's going on with uh, Prince Harry and his brother William, and maybe touch on uh, Kate and Charles too. So we'll see if I remember. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. So yeah, like I said, it's going to be a, a roundup of what's in the news right now. And, and mostly what's in the news, of course, and I think around the world uh, this is true, is um, this uh, Kamala Harris and Tim Walls are on fire and Trump seems to be um, getting burned. So we'll touch on that. I want to know about Joe Biden and how he's doing and, um, you know, a little bit about what's in his future. I uh, want to see how... Uh, Harry, Princess Harry and William might turn out. Harry just had a pretty successful little tour in Colombia. Uh, William has been on vacation with his family, I think. Prince Charles and Camilla, I wonder how that's going. And then Kate Middleton in general. So if I remember all of that, that's what the reading will be about today. If I can get these cards back together. So um, there we go. But before we do any of that, let's have just a moment. Of course, for meditation. So, yeah, we're going to see what's going to happen with uh, Kamala and Walls. Kamala and Walls. I just want to know, are they going to walk away with this thing? Kamala and uh, Tim Walls. So, Kamala and Tim Walls. Just three cards to kind of get into their groove right now, and then maybe another three cards to get more specific. So, Kamala and Tim Walls. Kamala and Walls. Helen Walls. Let's see what we have here. So we start out with uh, the Three of Cups. So this is celebrations, emotional celebrations. And you've got a couple of women here and a, and a man at the bottom. So celebrations, Kamala and Tim Walls. The Ace of Cups. Okay, this, this is another strong indication of emotional great. Oh, look, I got four cards by mistake, so that's good. And then uh, the Princess of Wands, so she's a princess with a plan. Now, I've got to tell you, this princess is a very weak member of the royal court, but uh, wands are actions, plans, forward movement, and at least a princess has a plan. And then uh, the final outcome for this is the Emperor card. Yeah, they're going to make it all the way. They're going to make it all the way to the White House. So uh, celebrations, great big emotional boost is what the country needed. She's a princess with a plan that's going to take them all the way to the White House. I think that's almost all I need to know about them. Let's do um, Joe Biden. Joe Biden, how is he right now? So you've got to think, so he did what Trump could never do. He gave up the power to Kamala. Okay? And uh, Trump can't even imagine uh, that he'd do that. Trump feels like Joe must have been pushed out. Can't even fathom that, that was a decision that Joe Mike Biden made on his own. So let's do uh, three cards on that. Did Joe Biden make that decision himself? Or was he given no alternative? You know what I mean, in a bad way. So was that Joe Biden's decision alone? First card 
is the uh, five of coins being left out in the cold. Yeah. He was being left out in the cold. Uh, temperance, finding a balance. And then finally, the ten of wands, which is just, you know, a lot of obstacles to overcome. I think uh, it, circumstances left him out in the cold. He was definitely feeling shut out by everyone who was telling him that he needed to get out. Uh, he knew that some temperance had to be applied here just so that it wasn't just the um, uh, excitement of the moment and, uh, and that this was the best thing to do. And in the end, with the Ten of Wands, he made the most difficult decision uh, with all of those uh, uh, problems that he had. So I'll, I won't say that he was pushed out, but he was shown the cards, so to speak. And, but I think he made the decision. No one told him, you have to get out. I think it was definitely, he was convinced somehow. So I wanna know, is Joe gonna live throughout uh, 2025? Very crass, but that's what I wanna know. Three cards for whether Joe will live throughout 2025. Okay, let's see what we have here. First card up. Okay, this is the Ten of Swords. It's the end of a cycle. It's the definite end of a cycle. This is the High Priestess. Okay, divine uh, guidance. And this is Secrets Being Revealed. Ah. Uh. I think maybe no, I think maybe 2025 might be his last year. Uh, this uh, high priestess, this divine guidance, I think he's calling him home. And these secrets being revealed will be what will come out uh, after he's gone. I don't think it'll be immediate, but uh, there will be some secrets come out that won't necessarily be bad secrets, just uh, decision points perhaps. So I don't think he's gonna make it through 2025. Um, so that's Harris and Biden. I guess we can switch right over to uh, Harry and William. So Prince Harry and Prince William. Okay, this ridiculous royal feud. Um, regardless of who you think is right, I don't think the feud is right. So Harry and William, four cards regarding this, this feud. Not specific to either one of them, just four cards for Harry and William and this feud. Okay, Harry and William. What's going on with these two? First card up is the Six of Wands. So Six of Wands is victory. Six of Wands is victory. Two of Swords, making a choice. Making a choice. The Nine of Cups, wanting to show your emotional uh, value, really. And then the Sun card. Everything here is bright and sunny and wonderful. Um, I think uh, they may come to um, some sort of arrangement eventually. Because we've got this... Um, Six of Wands is, is victory, and I'm asking about both of them. Uh, the Two of Swords is uh, making a choice, choose justice rules and law. The Nine of Cups is, uh, you know, the greedy merchant wanting to show his emotional value to all the world. And then the um, Sun card is just bright, blazing sunshine on the subject. So this may be the year for them too, this next year. Um, Princess Catherine, how is she going to do in 2025? How is Catherine going to do in 2025? Three cards, Catherine in 2025. One, two, Catherine in 2025.
Okay, so this is the King of Wands, Actions, Plans, Forward, Movement. This is the Five of Swords, so this is um, an abuse of power. This is Temperance, making a choice. Catherine, Catherine. So the King still is in control of what happens uh, with her uh, professionally. I will say because Wands is actions, plans, forward movement, and probably even to, to a big degree as far as how her uh, illness is handled publicly. The Five of Swords is that abuse of power. Okay, the Five of Swords is the king abusing his uh, control, and then and that's King uh, Charles. And then Temperance is this is again this is Catherine finding some happy medium between the two, still carrying water so to speak, for the family. And it's funny, I always say that, and here this maiden is at the well. Look, filling up, filling up that urn and looking resigned to, to her fate, waiting her turn. So she'll be waiting throughout 2025. Waiting throughout 2025. Let's see um, King Charles. Three cards. One, two, three. What's up for King Charles in 2025? Looks like 2025 could be a very transformational year. So this is the Page of Cups. He's reduced emotionally to a page. Uh, he is still the Emperor. And the Seven of Cups is illusion and delusion. So he still reigns supreme. So yeah, he's 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 a, he's a boy emotionally, but he's still the emperor, and he's still going to manage this illusion and delusion throughout 2025. So he'll be sticking around with us. And then Queen Camilla, I don't have much interest in in drawing on her. I mean, she's just there for the ride. No matter what happens, she's going to be fine because the king's going to leave her a ton of cash when he goes. She has the respect that he's demanded that she have. And uh, she'll just be a uh, dowager queen, if that's such a term, uh, when that time finally comes. And they'll probably leave all the inheritance to her kids, unless there's some stipulations as to where it can go after it leaves her. So, Camilla, three cards. I don't even want to do three cards, but I will. Camilla. She always got what she wanted, always. That's her, her good luck. Yeah, the Eight of Swords, uh, feeling trapped. <laughs> yep, be careful what you wish for, Camilla. You might get it. Uh, the Death card, end of a cycle. And the Ace of Wands, a great big action. You know, it might be that it, it's the end of the year or the first of next year before Charles uh, goes. And uh, she'll, she's trapped now. She'll remain trapped even after he's left. Uh, but it'll be a little bit freer for her. Then the death card, I think this is referencing the end of uh, the king. And then the uh, ace of wands is that the plan that he put into place for her just will, will continue. She'll be fine. So that's that quick roundup. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on a minute. Okay, so this is the newest edition. This is uh, the second time I've purchased from this group. Uh, and uh, the, these cards are called Revival Art Tarot Second Edition. And uh, they're from Taracho uh, Studios, which you can see right here. And they come to me, I think it's from Russia via the Netherlands. But uh, they're a lot of money. And um, but they're beautiful cards and you'll see. So they come in a very typical little cardboard box. No big deal there at all. Um, then the um, instruction booklet, again, is not uh, anything to write home about. It's just a typical little instruction booklet. The one good thing is that it is easily uh, read. And uh, in the uh, regular, uh, in the lower arcana cards, they've got an extra card in each uh, suit. So you know, you've got cups, wands, swords, and uh, I can never think of the forward suit off the top of my head. Uh, pentacles. Uh, but so you, they go all the way to the Ten of, of Swords, for instance. The next one then should be a page, but here we have a Princess of Swords. And then after the Princess of Swords, you still get the page, the knight, the queen, and the king. So you have one extra card for each of those four suits. So instead of 78, uh, 79, 
uh, 80, 81, 82 cards total in the pack. So that's interesting. So if that princess um, confused you, you could just take those four cards out and use them for some special occasion or never use them at all, or put them in there. And uh, this gives you an idea of how to divine the extra card. Uh, so very interesting. Then the cards themselves, they're really good stock. Uh, once you get them broken in, and what I mean by that is, you know, when they come off uh, production, they're really pressed together and there's no air between the cards and you can't hardly get between them. So it takes a little bit of shuffling and, and getting them uh, some air between the cards uh, before they're usable, really, and uh, not sticking to each other. And then the back of them is beautiful, and I haven't discovered anything particularly unusual about the back, um, except maybe until this very minute. Let's see. If you have the cards this way, you'll notice that there's a very small little rose right here. So if you see that small rose here up at the right-hand corner, then you know this card is going to be upright as it should. However, if this card was inverted, that small little rose becomes two roses. Okay, so if you see it, two roses up here rather than one, then you know that card is going to be inverted. So that's the example. Uh, I like knowing that. I don't know. It just gives you a little edge uh, when you're dealing the cards. And now I can straighten them out and not have to turn it over. I know that this, this is uh, inverted and this is straight. Now, to look at this art is amazing. And each one of these is a work of art that's referenced in the guidebook. For instance, uh, if I look at this uh, Fool, number one, with the Major Arcana, and it tells me that the Fool uh, is, in fact, the name of that piece of art is called A Jester by Philippe Mercier. And, um, and then it gives me the uh, divination for the card. Uh, beginnings, uh, possibilities, pleasure, etc. The next card, The Magician, if you were to see that one, that is a work of art called The Astronomer by uh, Candlelight. The Astronomer by Candlelight. And it's by, I guess it's going to be Gary Du. So uh, my foreign pronunciations aren't very good, but I do give it a try. So the cards themselves, you can see they go right to the edge of the card. They're beautiful pieces of art. And thought has gone into choosing these cards for the um, uh, position they stand for. The one thing uh, that's not uh, evidence, for instance, um, they're not always um, clear that, for instance, a two of pentacles is a two of pentacles. It might not have two pentacles on the card to tell you that. So they're a little um, interesting there. You should kind of look through the cards and understand what each one stands for first. But, I mean, look at them. They are absolutely beautiful. And it always feels to me like uh, intention has gone into making the selections of these actual pieces of art before uh, they uh, turn them into uh, tarot cards. And I like that. And I think you like them, too.